welcome back to Branchy Today. I'm Martha Constantinides and you're watching BCAM TV. Now we'll be getting into our latest stories from the week. Welcome back to Brandy Today. I'm Martha Constantinides and you're watching BCAM TV. Now we'll be getting into our latest stories from the week. A foreign policy specialist who once worked for the CIA and on the White House National Security Council has been indicted on U.S. charges that she worked as an unregistered agent of South Korea's government in exchange for luxury goods and other gifts. Sumi Terry pushed South Korea policy positions, disclosed non-public U.S. government information to South Korean intelligence officers, and facilitated access for South Korean government officials to the U.S. counterparts, according to an indictment that was made public on Tuesday. In return, the South Korean intelligence officers allegedly provided Terry with expensive handbags, clothing, and dinners at fine restaurants, as well as $37,000 in covert funding for a public policy program on Korean affairs that she ran. The indictment contains surveillance camera images of Terry receiving expensive gift gifts from South Korean agents at stores in Washington in 2019 and 2021. Terry's alleged work as an agent began in 2013, two years after she left U.S. government employment and lasted a decade even after FBI agents warned her in 2014 that South Korean intelligence might make offers to covert covertly pay for events. The indictment charges Terry with failing to register under the Foreign Agents Registration Act and conspiring to violate the law. An interesting new report from the United Nations says that the world's population is expected to grow to an estimated 10.3 billion people by the mid-2080s. That's up from the current global population of 8.2 billion people. The UN said that historically it took hundreds of thousands of years to reach a single billion before growing sevenfold in roughly two centuries. The UN report also said that the global population is aging, people 65 and older are expected to outnumber kids 18 and younger by the year of 2080. The current U.S. population is 341.8 million and it is among 126 countries whose population is expected to increase through the 2050s. Democrat Senator Bob Menendez of New Jersey was convicted Tuesday of taking bribes from three businessmen who gave he and his wife cash, gold bars, a Mercedes-Benz, and other extravagant gifts for his help in securing deals with foreign officials and trying to derail several criminal investigations in New Jersey. The jury in Manhattan federal court found the once powerful New Jersey lawmaker guilty on all 16 felony counts. They include bribery, extortion, wire fraud, conspiracy, obstruction of justice, and acting as a foreign agent for Egypt from 2018 to 2022 when Menendez was at the height of his influence in Washington, serving as chairman of the Senate Foreign Relations Committee or as the panel's top Democrat while his party was in the minority. His scheduled sentencing is for October 29th, which could include decades in prison. The senator is 70 years old. Menendez could serve out the rest of his term even after his conviction, though his colleagues could vote to expel him if he does not resign. New details on Thomas Matthew Crooks, the shooter in the failed assassination attempt of former President Donald Trump, are slowly starting to emerge. According to a source familiar with the matter, Crooks wrote on the popular gaming platform Steam that, quote, July 13th will be my premiere. Watch as it unfolds, end quote. Investigators have been trying to learn more about what Crooks was doing in the days and hours leading up. Some U.S. officials and said Crooks visited the Trump rally location twice. His cell phone contained images of both Trump and President Joe Biden, and the would-be assassin's search history included dates of the Democratic National Convention as well as future Trump events. Investigators combing through Crooks' physical and digital trail still failed to find a motive behind the 20-year-old's near-fatal plan. 
A massive data breach has once again hit telecom giant AT&T. Last week, AT&T disclosed that hackers accessed call and text records of nearly all its cellular customers for a six-month period between May to October 2022. The company said hackers downloaded the data from their workspace on a third-party cloud platform. While the files don't include call or text content, AT&T said the data identifies telephone numbers that an AT&T number interacted with during the period. This data breach is separate from one disclosed earlier this year by AT&T. AT&T said it will alert customers who were impact via, impacted via text, email, or U.S. mail. It also said people could log into their account where they'll be able to see if their data was affected. Customers can visit att.com slash data incident for more information. Thanks for watching Braintree today. We'll be right back with more after the break. Take steps to keep yourself and your family safe from ticks and the illnesses they can cause. Use EPA-approved tick repellents on your skin and clothes. Read and follow the directions. Wear light-colored clothing to make it easier to spot a crawling tick. Check for ticks on yourself, your kids, and your pets anytime you've been outdoors. Some tick bites can make you sick, but finding and removing a tick properly makes it less likely. Call your doctor if you start to feel ill or notice a rash near the bite. Play it safe when you're outdoors. Welcome back. Police arrested three suspects that are believed to be part of an international theft group after suspects allegedly installed hidden surveillance cameras to watch their victims and break into their home. 47-year-old Carlos Ocampo Carrillo, 34-year-old Diana Maria Alvarado Rosano, and 23-year-old Lisbeth Hernandez Gentiva were all arrested and charged separately. The three had addresses coming out of New York, but according to authorities, all three are citizens of Colombia and may face federal immigration charges. On June 20th, two of the suspects allegedly spent hours inside an empty home in the Messina Woods neighborhood. Officials say their methods match the methods of an organized international theft group, also known as South American theft groups. Since the incident, Braintree Police have released a number of tips to help prevent burglaries in your home. For more inform information, visit BraintreePD.org. In an announcement from the MBTA, the Red Line Braintree Branch Service will be suspended for 24 days in September. According to the release, the MBTA plans to accelerate major track improvement work on the Red Line's Braintree Branch from September 6th through the 29th. The hope is that MBTA crews will make repairs to 18 miles of track, resulting in the removal of over 20 speed restrictions and improving the round-trip travel time by as much as 24 minutes. The 24-day service suspension means there will be no trains servicing North Quincy, Wollaston, Quincy Center, Quincy Adams, and Braintree. Alternate shuttle bus plans will be finalized and announced soon, according to the agency. The Town of Braintree and the Metropolitan Area Planning Council are holding a public workshop to discuss the preliminary vision and recommendations for the Wood Road Revitalization and Mixed Use Development Initiative. The workshop will be held on July 30th at Cahill Auditorium at 1 JFK Memorial Drive in Braintree. The workshop will bring together key stakeholders, local business owners, community members, and Braintree Town officials for an evening of collaborative planning and insightful discussions to help inform the project development plan. For more information on this initiative and how you can contribute, please visit the project webpage at mapc.org slash resource library slash Wood Road or contact Raul Gonzalez at rgonzalez at mapc.org. The Town of Braintree has teamed up with Project Bread to offer free meals to kids and teens this summer. From July 1st through August 16th, free meals are being offered at both Hollis Elementary and Ross Elementary Schools. Kids and teens can pick up breakfast between 8.30 to 9.30 a.m. and then lunch is offered from 11.30 a.m. to 12.30 p.m. No registration or form of ID is required. This initiative is brought to local communities by the Massachusetts Department of Education, Project Bread, and local school and community meal providers. For more information, you can check out projectbread.org slash summer eats. The summer is upon us and the Nelson Chin Summer Concert Series is in full swing. Bell is sponsoring the free concerts every Tuesday evening at Braintree Sunset Lake Whaling Gazebo, as well as one concert that's going to take place at Smith Beach. 
Shows already started on June 25th and usually run from 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. For more information and a list of performers, head to braintreema.myrec.com. If you're unable to attend or want to watch a performance again, head to Bcam TV's public channels Comcast Channel 9 and Verizon Channel 28, or go to youtube.com slash bcamtv. The town of Braintree is now using a new system to send emergency and routine alerts to residents. The town is adopting the Civic Plus Mass Notification System, which residents must sign up for to receive any emergency or routine notifications. Residents can register to receive alerts via phone calls, texts, and or email. Types of messages sent through the notification system include town emergency notifications, town general notifications, the mayor's monthly newsletter, trash and recycling notifications, and water and sewer alerts. To register, visit braintreema.gov slash 1249 alerts notifications. Or if you want text only, text braintreema to 38276. Thank you for watching Braintree Today on BCAM TV. We'll be right back with more stories in the area. Welcome. Joining me today in the BCAM TV studio is Christina Castle, Circulation Librarian at the Thayer Public Library. Thanks for joining me, Christina. I know you have a bunch of fun summer events to talk about, so I'll let you get right into it. Thank you for having me. There is so much going on this summer at the library for everyone. Here are just a few of the upcoming programs to give you an idea. Monday, July 29th at 6.30 p.m., Mocktails and Beach Reads with Wendy Francis. Enjoy a tropical mocktail and talk beach reads with Massachusetts guest author Wendy Francis. Our special guest will share her favorite summertime beach reads, both new and old, including her own latest novel, Feels Like Summer. Please register for the event so we will know how many mocktail glasses we will need. After the program, we will email you the list of books mentioned. Tuesday, July 30th at 6 p.m. to 7.30 p.m., Silent Book Club. Do you miss silent reading time like when we were kids? Silent Book Club is exactly that, a traditional styled book club that's low pressure, social optional, and no homework. You read what you want. It's a book club for those with an already busy calendar or already full to be read pile that just need planned time to sit and read. This program is for adults, and this program is just one of six book clubs we offer at the library. You can find the others on our website at www.thayerpubliclibrary.org forward slash book dash club or our events calendar, which tells you any meeting and special summertime meetings. 10 a.m. Story time at the parks. Bring a blanket or a towel for more comfort. You'll be gathered under the shady trees and we'll bring the stories. This kids program will be held on Monday, July 22nd at Sunset Lake, Monday, July 29th at French's Common, and Monday, August 19th at Lincoln Park. Summer reading continues. This is for everyone and it's not too late to get in on the prizes. Prizes for Thayer Public Library's summer reading program are sponsored in part by Papa Gino's on Grove Street, Uno's Chicago Grill on Granite Street, Squishable in South Shore Plaza, and Altitude Trampoline Park in Avon. You can still sign up through mid-August. Kids, teens, and adults are invited to participate. Submit your summer reading reviews through the Beanstack app or on paper at the circulation desk, children's desk, or reference desks to be entered for weekly prizes as well as the grand prize. The Beanstack app allows our community the flexibility to participate in person, online, or a combination of both. One cool thing about the Beanstack app is that you can track your reading throughout the year as well. It's like an alternative to Goodreads. And if we do another reading challenge, you'll be notified. And don't forget to stop into the library to see what's on the community uh, reading board to see what the community is reading. And that's it for today. If you're looking for me at the library, I run the Science Fiction Fantasy Book Club and the Brown Bag Book Club. You can also find me online with the rest of the library on Instagram, Facebook, or YouTube for 60 Second Rex, a weekly video in which I pitch a book to you in 60 seconds or thereabouts. You can find more at thayerpubliclibrary.org forward slash events. Seems like a packed but super exciting month. Thank you again for joining us today. That was Christina Castle from the Thayer Public Library and I'm Martha Constantinides. Thanks for joining us and we'll be right back with more on Braintree Today. Welcome back to Braintree Today. Now let's get right into more stories. 
A former pediatrician from Norwell, Massachusetts has pleaded not guilty to charges that he sexually abused at least 15 children who were his patients. Richard Koff had been indicted on nine counts of rape of a child with force and eight counts of indecent assault and battery on a child under 14. He appeared in Plymouth Superior Court Friday, where he pleaded not guilty to all of the counts against him. Prosecutors say Koff retired in 2022 after nearly 40 years of work as a pediatrician, most recently at South Shore Medical Center in Norwell, where he lives. He also saw patients at the South Shore Medical Office in Kingston. Koff has been released on $50,000 cash bail with conditions that he have no contact with the victims and stay away from the Norwell and Kingston facilities of South Shore Medical Center. He may also have no he may also have no unsupervised contact with children under 16 or leave Massachusetts without, sup without permission, and he must surrender his passport and medical license. He's due back in court on September 17th. Boston police responded to a call for individuals with guns on Stanton Street in Dorchester late Tuesday night, a situation that ended with two arrests and an officer struck by a car. Markeith Walton of Marlboro and Robert Scott of Mattapan were arrested on firearm and trespassing charges. Boston police said in a statement, quote, Upon arrival, officers observed four males congregating around two parked motor vehicles. As officers exited their cruisers, the individuals began to flee the area. Two suspects jumped over a fence towards Norfolk Street, while another suspect entered one of the vehicles and attempted to flee. End quote. According to authorities, the car sped up towards officers at a high rate, striking one officer, forcing him onto the hood and rolling off the side. The officer was transported to a local hospital with non-life-threatening injuries. After canvassing the flight path of the suspects, officers recovered a large capacity magazine loaded with 11 rounds of ammunition and a third firearm. Scott and Walton were both charged and are expected to be arraigned in Dorchester District Court. A former Weymouth police officer was sentenced Tuesday to two years of supervised release, including six months of home confinement for assaulting a man in police custody. Justin Chappelle was also ordered to complete 80 hours of community service. Chappelle pleaded guilty in April to one count of deprivation of rights under color of law. He admitted punching a handcuffed man 13 times without justification. The charges stem from an incident in July 2022 that was caught on a body-worn police camera. In a seven-minute video, an officer identified as Chappelle is seen punching the handcuffed man identified by police as Donald McAdam. More than a dozen times, police said McAdam had spit on the police officers involved. The weather has been scorching lately and people are seeking relief at local beaches. Right now, several beaches across Massachusetts are closed due to high bacteria levels detected in the water. Luckily for those on the South Shore, there are still many beaches you can visit. In Braintree, Sunset Lake is open, but Smith Beach has closed due to increased bacteria levels. In Weymouth, both the George E. Lane and West Augusta beaches are open, and in Quincy, all beaches are open and safe to swim in except the Brody Baker Beach, which is closed due to excess bacteria. The Department of Health said that if a beach is closed, people are advised not to swim or enter the water at that location to avoid the risk of illness. The Massachusetts Department of Public Health updates the list of closed beaches every day at 9.30 a.m. and 12.30 p.m. during beach season. If the Sumner Tunnel closing for a month wasn't enough, now it's time to watch out for MBTA closures. For the next two weeks, parts of the MBTA's red line will be closed through July 28th for track work. Shuttle buses will replace service between Alewife and Kendall from 8.15 p.m. to the end of service, according to the MBTA. For the weekend of July 27th and 28th, shuttle buses will replace service between Alewife and JFK UMass for the entire day. A shuttle transfer will be available at Park Street Station. From July 15th to the 26th, shuttle buses will replace service between Alewife and Kendall MIT. Shuttles will then extend to Park Street at 8.30 p.m. on weekdays and all day on weekends. Thanks for watching Braintree Today. We'll be right back with more in entertainment. James. He was surprised to find out that he has elevated blood pressure, which could turn into high blood pressure. So he talked with his doctor about a healthy path to get his numbers down. 
He quit smoking, which makes a big difference for his overall heart health. He also cut down on salt by watching out for high sodium on food labels and added a 30-minute walk five days a week to his routine. These healthy steps weren't easy, but lowering his blood pressure was worth it. Learn more about his healthy path. Welcome back to Brain Tree Today. This weekend in entertainment, we have three movie recommendations for you to watch. First, Long Legs follows FBI agent Lee Harker, who is assigned to an unsolved serial killer case that takes an unexpected turn, revealing evidence of the occult. Harker discovers a personal connection to the killer and must stop him before he strikes again. The film stars Micah Monroe and Nicolas Cage. You can watch Long Legs now in theaters. Next up, Twisters follows Kate Cooper, who after being haunted by a devastating encounter with a tornado, gets lured back to the open plains by her friend to test a groundbreaking new tracking system. She soon crosses paths with Tyler Owens, a charming but reckless social media superstar who thrives on posting his storm chasing adventures. As storm season intensifies, Kate, Tyler, and their competing teams find themselves in a fight for their lives as multiple systems converge over central Oklahoma. The film stars Daisy Edgar Jones and Glenn Powell. You can watch Twisters now in theaters. And finally, My Spy The Eternal City follows JJ, a, a veteran CIA, CIA agent who reunites with his protege Sophie in order to prevent a catastrophic nuclear scheme aimed at the Vatican, which disrupts a high, a high school choir trip to Italy. The film stars Dave Bautista and Chloe Coleman. You can watch My Spy The Eternal City now on Amazon Prime Video. That'll do it for news today. Remember, if you're a customer of Verizon, you can watch Bcam TV in high definition on channel 2128. I'm Martha Constantinides, and thank you for watching Braintree Today on Bcam TV. We'll see you next time.